I've been asked to evaluate a uh, 190SL cylinder head. Um, I'm be going to be on macro, so uh, some of the distance shots may be a little fuzzy. Uh, what we just for general information, uh, the number on the side of the cylinder head, the uh, ten-digit number is the casting number, not a part number, and then the number below that is the compression ratio. In this instance it's uh, 8.8 .8 to 1 compression ratio. Now then, the um, way these cylinder heads usually deform is they will warp when you take them off uh, or if they've gotten hot um, or if the head bolts have loosened up. What will happen is the head will warp and I'm having a hard time holding it here. Darn it. All right. It's not going to work. The head warps in a, as as if it's a bow. Uh, let's make a let's make a little depiction right here. All right. This is your this is the cylinder head. And when it comes off the engine, or if it's been overheated, it's going to warp like this. Here's the, here's the top of the head with your valve springs. And it's going to warp in a, in a bow. And what happens is people make the mistake of not straightening the head out. And in order to get rid of the bow, they come in and they mill. And so what they do is they cut across here and, uh, until they get to the low point. And what they end up doing is cutting off a little chunk here, a little chunk here, to where this becomes completely flat. Well, the problem is, of course, this distance is no longer the same, or this height is no longer the same all through here. And that's what we have in this instance. So if we look at this head, we've got... Uh, the st thickness of uh, 3 inches 328, uh, 3 inches 333, 3 inches 333, 3 inches 328, 3 inches 325. It's thin at the extremes and thicker in the middle. And the same uh, down here. Uh, 3 inches 325 on this end goes up to 330, 332. 332 and then back down to 3 inches 324. Uh, so we've got thin, we're thin on this end, on each of the ends and thick in the middle. Um, the original um, dimension that we that these, these cylinder heads came out to be uh, left when they left the factory they were measured 3 inches 346. So we've had uh, approximately um, 16 thousandths removed. We've got a total of uh, 40 thousandths that can be removed before the head is too thin. So we still have plenty of um, material left. Now then, um, this head has got an, um, a lot of damage done to it here and here in the removal and all through here. This has to be welded. Um, uh, other areas that have to be welded, um, this area all through here is real moth-eaten so that you don't have any crisp, sharp corners for the head gasket to um, seal against. Uh, your water diverter tubes uh, will have to be removed because you can't weld with these in place. They're a different material than, than the um, uh, cylinder head and uh, they just don't, they don't weld. Uh, and they're designed to be replaceable so you pull those out, weld clean up everything, machine, be machine work, and then you put them, push them back in place. Now then, in addition to, oh, also, uh, we're only warped uh, three thousandths, which is um, um, indicative of the fact that the head has been milled, and when it came off this last time, it didn't deform, uh, to speak of. Now, the problem with the um, warping of the cylinder head uh, in, in the milling of it is that this upper surface right here where the valve cover and the camshaft goes is not is no longer going to be straight. Um, 
So we're going to move this over. And the head surface, uh, where the uh, valve cover goes and where the camshaft goes, uh, this surface is warped 14 thousandths on this side and 22 thousandths on this side. And what that means is when you bolt the camshaft in place, the camshaft is going to bind. And what we have to do is put some shims underneath the cam stands so that uh, you uh, can replace the lost material due to this thing being milled uh, when it was uh, warped. And all you can do is install your camshaft and then um, as you snug it down, see where it binds and loosen it up and put um, shims underneath there, underneath the cam tower stands. Um, what else? We have uh, yet to remove the guy, the valves and check the um, guides and the valve seats. Yeah, it's not too terribly difficult. Uh, the important thing is to remember that the uh, intake valves have got to be recessed below the parting surface, about uh, 50, 60 thousandths below the parting surface, as I, as I recall from memory. And if you don't, then this valve is going to hit the top of the piston. So, in addition to uh, wor welding the head, which might induce some warpage, you then uh, have to um, clean up your weld, make sure that you're not warped uh, any more than about three to four or five thousandths is as much as you can handle uh, before you need to start straightening the head. And um, what we do is put it on the uh, a thick plate, bolt it down, and uh, stress relieve it with um, get it up to about 180, 200 degrees and stress relieve it. Then once that's done, uh, you'll need to mill the surface to get good clean material and uh, for the head gasket to grab onto. And then you need to measure and to see if you're, uh, once you've done the valve job, you make sure your valves, your intake valves are sitting about 60 thousandths below the parting surface. And that will get you a, a cylinder head that you can use. Uh, you just have to balance that with the price of a new cylinder head. and. Uh, See which way to go. Hope that helps a little bit. If you have any questions, please ask.